after I am without Lulu. I think Faker has shown that when his team doesn't crumble around him, his Lulu is still very fearsome. And look, I get what I want. Lulu's banned out on Ijanair. All right, so Faker's going to have to play something different as well, but knowing Faker, that's usually not a big problem. I have more than a sneaking suspicion he's going to play a Zia this game, Doa. That's just how oh, it goes no. sometimes no. for Faker. Yeah, I mean, it, I wouldn't be surprised, but I, I don't think that would be good. As good. Only BDDs looked truly impressive on Azir in 2016. I mean, uh, Faker's looked impressive on Azir in, in past tournaments, but... Uh, he was always the second best Azir, even yeah. on his own team, though, Doa. As Easy Hoon was the Azir master. Right. But he had all those solo queue highlights, man. There's an Italy ban. So what's the first pick going to be? Uh, Corky is available. Yeah, I mean, if if you can't uh, grab the Nidalee, grab the Corky. Expect to see SKT pick up Braum. I expect to see them pick up Callista. Braum, Callista would be an insane deal. I mean, I'm surprised those champions are both available, but... I know, right? I mean, you could go... Uh, Braum, Callista would be great. Braum, Callista is what you, what you take. Exactly, because you have yeah. the Unbreakable. So the moment you see Corky, you're like, okay, could be a poke comp, Unbreakable, very high priority. And then... The Callista, if you face check that comp level one, you give up a couple of kills. So much power there. There is other strong champions like Nautilus available, but Trundle could be an answer from Jyn Air. So, Braum Callista makes so much sense. Oh, yeah. We didn't even talk about Nautilus in game number one, but yeah, still a power pick right now, even though we didn't see it. But yeah, I think, I, I agree. I'm with you, man. Braum Callista, maybe Braum Nautilus. You could, you could make an argument, but. Especially because you already know that Corky is locked in for the other side. But, but Pilot plays the Callista, and obviously it could just be yeah. double AD. Surprisingly, might uh, be okay. taking Alistair priority over Braum. There was a couple of weeks where all the supports were saying, well, I feel Braum in the Alistair laning matchup, and then I think Braum scales into the late game better, so I take it earlier rotation than Alistair. But surprisingly, it's actually going to be the more proactive champion for Wolf in Alistair. Well, I guess SK Telecom, you know, may be committing to a little bit more aggressive play style, kind of like what we saw in game number one. We'll see if they can pull it off. Only could be risky to lock in Nautilus in a world where Trundle is available. It would yeah. be pigeonholed into a Trundle top, as Alice has already been locked in for SKT. A little bit less flexibility there. What did Jinair want to do? They need to get a bit more carry on to Trace, who honestly had no impact in the last game whatsoever on the Bumpy. Well, picking a champion like Kindred could certainly do that. Winged will be able to be a little bit more aggressive there. Looks like it might be time to grab the Braum, so Braum Nautilus. You know, do you really need to pick the Braum since you already know what the support is going to be on the other side? That seems a bit odd. I guess they're just looking for more information about what SKT want to field. I guess so. They're obviously showing that well, we're heavily expecting to be Nautilus top, but always the outside chance of Nautilus mid. Yeah, I mean, but they're also showing that uh, Nautilus is definitely not going to be a support too. So I figure, you know, I feel like Jyn just gave away a lot more information than they're going to get out of SKT. In a world where Nautilus can go mid and Corky can go AD carry, they still have a high degree of flex. Only Braum is stuck into his role, and SKT had shown nothing by locking in Alistair and Callista, so still a degree of ambiguity for Jyn Ares. SKT actually just lock in Maokai straight up. Yeah, it's not a pick we've seen terribly often outside of, uh, well, like, what? Hippo was playing it quite a bit. Untara at the start Untara, of the season. Untara, that's what I'm thinking of, yeah. Maokai is super interesting to me because, remember, it's Duke playing Maokai. When we think of Duke, we think of Fiora. We think of carry champions. Yeah. Quinn also, but full AP Maokai. Maokai is an interesting one because the big criticism for Duke, you know, he won the spring MVP, he was struggling in summer of 2015. The big criticism was his teleport play. He always looked like he struggled to teleport. And then they played nine games in a row with Duke playing Maokai. And I theorized it was putting him on teleport training wheels. Because if you don't get the teleports off as Maokai, why are you playing Maokai, right? That's what he's True. all about, the teleport flank. So it's interesting to see him early rotation take it, obviously leaving the mid lane counter pick for Faker. Ezreal locked in for Pilot. And so he'll be giving that one a try. Obviously, Bang's already going to be playing Callista, so... How many AD carries, like, Noah? Oh. Well, apparently we're getting three this game, so... What do you pick to try to counter this? Well, Braum certainly, as a first-round draft, was open to SKT and they looked past it, so you can't be too surprised when you see a lot of sieging coming through from Jyn Air. Oh, we knew it. Yeah, I yeah, called you it. called that one, yep. Yep. So Faker's going to be playing the Azir. 
and it's in how the mid lane. You, and this is the comp where it's like, how do I get to the Callista? This is a bang comp because who's going to get to the Callista when you've got Maokai, Elise, the Azir Ultimate, and Alistair to peel? So a lot of mid game power. You get a couple of items onto Callista. The Hurricane Blade, the Ruin King, she can dance as aggressively as she wants with this much peel. And Azir does a lot of damage in the mid lane as well. But every time we see Faker face a champion like Azir, you know that he wants to go for the confident bit. He just took down an Azir. Now he's going to show us what Azir is all about. Oh, yeah. I have seen, we have seen Faker do this many, many times. If he uh, beats a champion, he's like, now I'm going to beat you with this Especially when it's a I skill beat. champion, right? Oh, yeah. All the time, yeah. <laughs> We, want, we wondered, what would he play when Lulu was finally not available? I had a sneaking suspicion it was going to be the Azir, and Azir last pick by SKT. Yeah. Azir's coming back in a big way right now, it seems like. Thanks, BDD. Yeah, no kidding. SK Telecom uh, with a chance to get a 2-0 here, which would be very big for them. They, if they want to make the playoffs, if they want to get a good seed in the gauntlet, they need to start moving up their rankings right now. They cannot afford to lose any more matches, I think. It, you know, with this composition, things look pretty good, and we'll see just how uh, how close SK Telecom is going to be to moving up once again. SKT has so much early power. If Winged ever falls behind the jungle, at least gets the ganks off. I fear for Jin because they could get run over a second game in a row. Yeah. The other big question: Can Blank perform on a champion that's not in Italy? Let's find out. Can SKT get the 2-0, or will Jin Wear tie things up? Let's get in the game. All right, welcome to Summoner's Rift. Jenner, Green Wings. Taking on SK Telecom, T1, our reigning world champions in multiple tournament circuits. <laughs> but yet, still languishing down at sixth place here in Korea. Chance to move up today, though. Finally looking like their grand reputation, though, in game one, where... For one game, at least, yeah. Convincingly dismantled Jin Air, and the comp they've put together here is a really impressive one. The big X factor to me is the jungle matchup and basically the skirmishing around mid because they've got Graves on the side of Jin Air, champion who likes to farm, can be involved in early ganks but needs a lot of lane CC to get that off. Obviously with Nautilus has that, but around the mid lane, Kuzan's going to be fighting just damage on the Corky side. I feel like if Blank can get control of Kuzan, if Faker can actually get a pressure advantage in a difficult matchup against Corky in the mid lane. Maokai is going to be fine, flexible and top. Callista, Alistair, one of the strongest possible 2v2s. Lane swap heavily incentivized for Jin Air because if there ever was this scenario where SKT could get lane pressure in mid, <laughs> it'd be just like game one where SKT had pressure around the map and Jin Air just get blown over. Yeah. Well, they do get the lane swap though this time. So they won't have to worry about those 2v2 lanes after all. Get away from Callista, Alistair, whenever you can. Successfully done by Jeanette. Yep. Probably a good idea. Nautilus actually been able to get some experience. One CS before now, of course, having to go off and join the jungle follow late. That extra experience will help in the jungle follow. So ping two earlier if you're the Nautilus. Yep. Yeah, Bang and Wolf just getting a good amount of time to farm in the bot lane. Pilot. Farming up in top. And it's a win twofold for Jin Air. When you get a lane swap off, you hide your jungle matchup. When I, when I was back casting LPL, whenever we would see Sejuani jungles come out, you really want a lane swap because Sejuani can't deal with the 1v1 jungle matchup. We just saw Winged obliterated by Blanks, Nidalee, and the pressure she could put out in game one. So the jungle follow, now the junglers are predictable. Now you don't have to worry about that big snowball advantage for the enemy jungler. And you also dodge the tough 2v2 laning matchup against Callista and Alistair. So getting these this lane swap was a big win for Jeanette. Yeah. All right, Blank already infiltrating the enemy jungle here. Well, to be fair, it's his side of the jungle. It's vertical jungle. It is Zilla. his now, yeah. It's true. Bot side of the map is SKT's and expect to see Jin Air exclusively on the top side till this lane swap ends. Wow, Faker doing a lot of damage to Kuzan, really pushing him out in that lane. It's hard to win those trades. I guess so. As Azir, so the fact that he's doing so in such a big manner is worrying for Jin. Yeah. Turrets will be traded though, as usual. SKT getting theirs a little bit quicker though. 
Look like I might be pushing for two as well. Remember, this is a ranged jungler in Elise who does have an attack speed steroid. This might be a two for one trade. Yeah, I think it might actually be. Okay, so the top lane goes down. Teleport's coming in, or rather, recall's coming in. They're going to send Pilot and Jay to the bot lane. But will they get there in time to save this turret? It's already at about half health. I think this nope. turret's going to go down. They're not even out of the base yet, yeah. though. This is the reality when you have a ranged jungle who wow. also gets an attack speed steroid at level one with a W in spider form completely owned in the lane swap. That's a big advantage yep. for SKT. That's already a 1,000 gold lead at four minutes now because they've got that extra turret. And now with the lane pushed back so far and such high health values, if you tanked the dragon expertly with the spiderlings. It could have even been a dragon as well, but perhaps that's pushing it too far. You worry about the lane assignments, then you don't want to lead, lead, lead to a scenario where you get the extra turret, but Duke can't find farm. So they back away, but a big advantage already in the pockets for SKT. Yeah, very true. So they rotate Duke down to bot lane now too, I suppose. Just let him just farm whatever he wants. Suffer, because yeah. uh, he has no turrets anywhere near and the lane's so pushed up that until it pushes back he's gonna have to struggle but i guess one of the reasons why that we might have seen the maokai priority is that even in these scenarios as one of these melee tanks he still is able to throw out oh has to flash as the yeah. first gust of blow stack comes in but saplings does let maokai range farm so can try to push back or influence the minion waves if they're frozen yeah he's recalling now gonna go back for his first buy and i'll probably just teleport back to lane you're gonna get second Dorans. So far, just boots. Yep. Yep. Second Dorans and a Ruby Crystal. Are we gonna be the 2015 build of your? Probably still gonna be a Righteous Glory, but outside chance of a Banshee Veil if necessitated. It might not be bad. Engineer looking to take that bottom lane tier one. They'll probably get it. But then again, it'll probably be traded given the lane swap situation. No help though, so it'll be a slower trade from SKT. You can see the pulverize being used to try and push, but it's gonna be a lead, but definitely no answering second in a tower. That's the big difference between the two teams. No yeah. way for Jin Air to match what SKT were able to pull off in the first part of the lane swap. Well, I mean, they do have this little turret advantage for the moment anyway. But guess what that gives SKT? It gives Duke a lane to enter where there's going to be minions pushing back into the top side. So Duke's finally going to get that safe farm. One item Maokai is very powerful. So if they can get Righteous Glory onto this Maokai, start team fighting, they're definitely going to be in a good spot. That's a good point. This is basically them sacrificing the turret gold for Duke to get the lane pushing into SKT and Maokai, that first item. Yeah. And now let's see if Jinna can find anywhere for Nautilus to enter. Level three, gonna have to deal with a very deep frozen lane. Okay, well Trace is gonna have to uh, make some plays around the map because unless he gets a lot of help, top lane's gonna be difficult for him to deal with. Yeah, probably. So far he's just kinda hanging out right now. CS for both top lane is really low, obviously. Look how many SKT wards, including a pink, are around. Oh, Kuzan so may be trapped here. Kuzan goes for the Valkyrie. Over the wall comes Blank. He's going to flash back onto that Corky. But here comes the Summoner heal from Winged, or rather from Kuzan, to keep him alive. Now Blank, the one in trouble. First blood goes over to Jin Air. Faker pushes people back with the Emperor's Divide. Not having to use his summoners to get out, but that uh, little cute gank attempt for SK Telecom in the enemy jungle really got turned around hard. But it was greedy, though. Remember, it they was. were just going to lead to a scenario where Trace couldn't get any experience, any levels, be completely denied in top. But they went for the aggressive move. Trace couldn't enter top, so he just comes and helps with the gank attempt. Counter ganks, they pick up experience, they pick up a kill for Trace. This is gold that should never have gone to the Nautilus, but basically donated by over-aggression from SKT. Yeah. Pretty much. And that's kind of the more and of now the Duke SKT has to push back. we've, uh, yeah, that's more of the SKT we've been seeing this season up until now. But now Duke has to push back. Now the lane that was going to be frozen is going to be a lot more equal. SKT lose more than just a kill for that failed attempted game. They lose Good. their dignity, that's right. Do they really have that in career in 2016? Yeah, man. They have SK their class. SKT had it. They have their class, but losing 2-0 to Longju and then losing a series to Afrika, their dignity was certainly lost for at least a little bit of time there. Well, they got it back in game number one, though. That's true. You got a little bit of dignity recovery, but then then this game happened. But again, it is still early. 
we'll see. And uh, Jin Air doing a good job of doing what I think they wanted to do last game, which is to sort of play safe, farm up, respond to the aggression from SKT. And this one's going uh, quite a bit better. Even though Pilot has frozen down next to his inhibitor turret and bot, which means that can't really hope to help with anything across the map, he is getting empty lane farm. Oh boy. As an Ezreal, which is good when you have the Tia, as, as you mentioned. Winged and Blank are in close proximity. Yeah, they're going to collapse on him. Here comes Corky with the package. Shea is right there as well, too. Blank tries to get away, gets exhausted, gets killed. Kuzan with a kill there. And maybe this is just what happens when Blank doesn't get to play in Italy. I don't know. I feel like Gragas is okay, but didn't get the chance this game. Actually, no, they did have the chance to but take Gragas. But it's not Gragas's the champion, game. right? It's not because it's Elise, it's just that Blank's somewhere he shouldn't be. Maybe that's poor shot calling from SKT, maybe that's just inexperience at the highest level of competitive play, but SKT, when you see an Ezreal freezing the lane next to his inhibitor turret, the last thing you expect is a three, four man collapse in your jungle, but that's just not showing respect for Jenna, who are making plays in spite of losing that turret. Yep, well, it's K-Telecom trying to get something back from this anyway by going for the Dragon. Jenner is going to grab the Rift Herald. And that first dragon stack is, is nice to kind of mitigate the little power boost that Jinair got from those early kills. The stats will help handle that a little bit anyway. But when you, again, have a lane frozen at your inhibitor turret at 10 minutes, there's no hope of fighting for early dragons. You don't have anywhere near the requisite pressure to be able to compete. So the fact that they got a kill and then turned that into an equal trade in terms of neutrals with Rift Herald, is, is fine for Jinnah. They're getting more than they would have ever expected, and a lot of that is the pressure loss from initially getting caught by Blank earlier this game. Yeah. Faker getting some good poke down on that mid lane turret before he has to back away. Yeah, some of the CS issues. Yeah, during that freeze, Bang wasn't able to keep up, so surprisingly Ezreal now 16 CS ahead of the Callista. It's a big deal, yeah. He's getting a nice lead. Well, Trace is like, I would like this farm, but I'm gonna give it to Ezreal. What a, what a guy. What a guy. Pilot on Ezreal. A lot of comfort. Yeah, definitely. Well, it seems like Ezreal's kind of a comfort pick for a lot of these AD carries too. He is one of the oldest AD champions in the game. And it's good that you said that, because whenever yeah. you see an interview with one of these legacy AD carries or three, four year AD carries, Ezreal always seems to be their favorite champion. Deft, Imp, both have said they love Ezreal. Oh yeah. Just the ability to make plays and also escape from bad ones just makes Ezreal so good. The safety is always the story. Of course, builds have changed for Ezreal, but whenever I conceptualize him, it's not the late game damage. It's, we were in a world of hyper carries, right? Back in the day, it was Vayne versus Ezreal. Hyper carry uh, damage. Is Wolf slowed down. He's going to get stunned here. Pulls him in with the fake call just to avoid that. Blank manages to land the cocoon. But again, SKT having to use those alts defensively. Tank battle. Oh yeah. Who will come out ahead? Nobody. When Maokai and, and uh, Nautilus fight, no one wins. Nope. Not until the team fight phase. It's always a bit more fun. Jinair's trying to push up their bot lane a little bit. And you notice they're pushing up their bot lane with the pressure of their jungle. They're playing smart. This is what we saw SKT do in game one. Duke's actually winning the trades with low mana. Yep, has to back away. Trace takes that moment to jump on him. Gets the anchor in there. Who will get the next grass proc to sustain? It's easier for Duke to get. Oh, Faker very, very low. There's a cocoon over the wall. Kuzan comes in, tries to eliminate Ooh. Faker. Whoa, that collateral damage nearly did it. But he has to exit lane. They can't give Corky free time, so suddenly SKT gonna be visible on the map trying to defend this out of mid lane turret. Yeah. Trace coming down too, just to secure that. Blank may not want to be sticking around so much. I don't know, okay. Trace does pull off, so it looks like Blank is gonna be okay, but it seemed like he was leading up to being collapsed on again. In a world where ranged AD carries can be junglers up, teleport bot. Yeah, that's, that's a really right. deep teleport yeah. by Duke. Duke's trying to come in behind Che and Pilot. There he is, pops that ultimate. Pilot's right there. Duke trying to slow people up, gets a twisted advance onto that Ezreal. Pilot turns around, throws that true shot barrage backwards, but here comes Bank, lands the first spear. He'll have the slow with the rend if he wants it. Blank coming in, nice cocoon onto Che. SKT looking for those kills. They're going to get one. We'll pass to back away. I think they were wanting a bit more, but you know, they'll take it. 
I'll take it for now. Yeah, big investment, remember, Jinna have no turrets buying their inhibitor turret up. That's why they want to keep chasing. But Che just sacrificed his life, stayed pushed up, allowed Pilot to get away. And there was no way for Wing to react. He was on the top side of the map, so just goes to the minion wave. Keeps up the pushing. SKT want more, but for now, Jinair holds strong. Yep, pretty much. It's a fight, and Blank, of course, takes a red buff. He's got Smite. That's true. Smite's pretty good for that. Graves jungle. Not great in ganks unless you got the CC, but when it comes to the turret taking, whether it's Kindred or the Graves, yeah. just walk up to a turret, you're already chunked out Faker. Turret's so easy to take. They're paper thin these days, so. Man. That's why everyone wants to be an AD carry. Look at Bang's build right now. It is just painful to look at. That is that is not a lot of damage on that list. When you look at your AD carry having this build at 14 minutes, you usually start raging in chat. Yeah, like what is this guy doing, man? <laughs> okay. Picked up his cutlass now, but still it's it doesn't it doesn't really make you feel too much better, does well, it? It doesn't do anything. This build doesn't yeah. team fight. It's got some lane sustain. I guess you can CS under turret pretty well with it, but that's we about saw, all it does. And we saw in that last fight too, SK Telecom was close to getting another kill or two out of that. And a big part of why they didn't was because Bang just didn't have the damage. Seeing SKT push around top. Nautilus, as expected, doesn't have a turret to get back to, but Wing just there to give him some pressure. Kuzan coming in though. As yours frozen in bot, that's why SKT are trying to punish. Oh, they're going to go in into Duke. Duke pops that ultimate right away. Here comes Wing Che. Kuzan coming from the side. Throws in a rocket, but Jinair not really finding the engagement they were looking for. They do push up that lane, but they leave mid undefended. Faker's just going to walk in and take it out. Can he get away, though? Faker kills the mid lane turret. Now he's got to escape from Kuzan and Pilot. That might be hard. Over the wall he goes. That's Kuzan flash. still chasing. Yep, and with that flash, he should be able to make it. Meanwhile, a fight in the back lines. Wing gets low, gets killed by Bang. He needs that gold, too. And now SK Telecom chasing Faker already with the Disc of the Sun, where the turret used to be. Nice Emperor's Divide gets Kuzan and Pilot. Now it's the knockup, so Faker gets very low, but SKT all over this team fight. Trace, the last one standing. That's a double kill for Faker. What a play on that Azir to set up a complete team fight victory for SKT. And just really questionable by Jinna to leave Faker in mid. They had Ezreal freezing him, but if Ezreal wow. was in mid, that play doesn't happen. But because Ezreal reacts late, Faker takes the turret, puts down the sun turret, and just as multiple members get caught in transition, so smart to fight because there's nowhere for Jinna to go. The moment they go towards mid lane, there's an enemy turret to deal with, and then Faker on Azir. Rewriting the story and showing us the potential of Azir. This play onto the backline, remember, two of these ranged carries completely ruined by the Flash Emperor's Divide. Man, Faker I mean, just turns that Emperor's Divide into a double insect kick and puts both carries right in the middle of his team. The Azir Beautiful. sec is very, very good. <laughs> and even though Callista doesn't have the items at that point, goes back, shops, gets to play the Ruin King, and 203 is now the Callista, and that early phase, the awkward itemization she had, is a thing of the past. Yeah, things, uh, things just turned around in a pretty big way for SK Telecom, and it's a moment we talk about with this team where they uh, may look like they're behind a little bit early on, but if they find that chance to strike, they'll take it. Winged was going for the Dragon, gets chased away, and SKT just walks up and grabs this one. That's two Dragons for SK Telecom. They've jumped out to about a 3,000 gold lead. Don't worry for Jinair now. SKT, probably the best team in the world at team fighting with Callista. They've done it so many times ever since the release of that champion. Bang only has the two competitive losses on Callista ever. Yeah. Got the early power spike of the Maokai, who hasn't actually gone for the Righteous Glory, gone much more for the Sunfire and just the ability to push the waves in around the side. Their teleport players will be strong. Faker's already shown that he's been practicing the Azir, apparently. Oh, yeah. I mean, and Faker was always a, a good Azir player as well. Just overshadowed by Easy Hoon, that was, who was probably the best Azir player. Not in my ma mind, man. I never bought into the hype. Never I never into bought the into the Easy hype. Fair. Yep. <laughs> so. Jinair in a lot of trouble, and they've got this triple AD composition, but now it's being kind of pushed back to the other side of the map. And you've got Alistar, Maokai, able to build that, uh, able to build armor. Looks like Blank is going to join in and actually be tanky least this game. The thing about Jinair's comp is that if you're walking up to turrets, taking them, 
know, you got Braum and, Tr and Nautilus in the front line. The comp functions well. It's just now that there's two dragons for SKT, that becomes three, that becomes four. You're forced to team fight. There isn't really a lot of team fight options for Jin Air. Yeah. It's a super squishy lineup outside of the Nautilus. We already saw in game one, they struggled in team fights where they try to get the drop on SKT and then just get dismantled. And if Faker continues to make plays like that, can displace one or more of these squishy AD carries. I think SKT are going to run right again. I mean, the the tricky part for Jinair's comp, too, is that none of their carries are, like, sustained damage carries, right? You've got Burst from Gorky, Burst from Ezreal, Burst from Graves, but you don't have somebody that can just sit there and do a lot of damage over time, you know? So that's going to mean uh, big windows for SKT to come in and be aggressive after they survive that initial burst. But you see Duke. He's on the Maokai. He gets the teleport with the home guards. He's got three targets of equal value that they take them down, and there's not going to be tankiness. There's not going to be enough damage. Jinair yep. will fall apart. Here we go. SKT. SKT over oh. the wall. Oh, Emperor's Divide doesn't quite connect there, but they're still all over Trace right now. Che pops at Braum Ultimate, gets a knockup, but no follow-up and not enough to keep SK Telecom from taking him out. SK. They're going to get that top turret. Oh, they're going to go in again, I think. Yeah, maybe. Well, Fate's Call. Wow, Wolf flashes for that Pulverize. Nice headbutt. On to Trace, he's so tanky, but the Rend does the damage they need. Exhaust onto Wing to cut that damage output as SK Telecom decides to make an organized retreat. Here comes Pilot though, gotta be careful. Nice ult from Wing to pick up that kill onto Wolf. SK Telecom may have overstayed their welcome just a little bit. Let's see if they can get out. Looks like they probably can, yep. Looks like they're fine, but still a big lead for SKT though. No way for Jin Air to punish them either. Both dragons have already gone down. Baron's not a realistic objective on spawn. Well, they punished them as much as they could, really, you know? But you take the kill, you push up the lanes. Maybe you get some more damage into this mid turret they prepped earlier. It was a good ult from uh, Wing. The Rift Herald still riding on Faker. Very hard to push him down. Yep. I mean, he's at least got the attack speed out of those minions. And, you know, Zir's got decent wave clear anyway, so. You just see in those fights, okay. though. SKT get the pick on a tank. Suddenly there's no tank line, and all three AD carries kite back in different directions. Yeah. If they get pick on a damage dealer, it's not going to be enough damage to take down the Spirit Visage Sunfire Cape. The frontliner of Duke. They need all three carries, but they also need both tanks. There's so many different pick options between Duke, Elise, and Alistar that they get that successful pick. I don't know how Jin Air win a fight. Yeah, I think you're right. I mean, uh, SK Telecom is caught back up and overtaken Jin Air in every way in the last uh, five minutes or so. Bang went from being, you know, really kind of stuck with that pretty awful item build to suddenly being 2k gold ahead of Pilot after getting all those kills. Come back to the lane swap game, which was on full display at IEM, where the Chinese region especially struggled in the lane swaps and put them behind early. Yeah. We talk about the lane swap game here. In a game where Jin Air have triple AD carry, they lost the lane swap game, something chronic to SKT and been behind ever since. SKT turning off that Baron, another huge out. Emperor's Divide comes in for Faker. Wolf getting the back lines onto Kuzan and Che. A kill already for Faker. Gets the jungler, they get the support. Kuzan has to flash away. Trace on his own, not being a front line for anybody. Jumps onto Bang, but Kuzan taking too much damage, does manage to pick up that Kalista before things are all said and done. Pilot's still a dangerous person to worry about. And SKT will just back off from that. They lost Bang due to a good play from Kuzan, and they can't really push it too much farther. Do they even dare to do the Baron right now? I, I don't know. Without Kalista, it seems kind of risky, doesn't it? Yeah, very, very low Baron damage. Azir has high Baron damage, but as you mentioned, it's Azir and a load of tanks, so... Maybe just looking for another yeah. pick onto Pilot. The poke from Pilot is so good right now, though. It's yeah. Four members. Faker falling low. This seems really risky. They're committed to it now, though. Pilot, he's got that true shot barrage soon. Doesn't get it. They get the Baron. Going to jump onto that Ezreal right away. He's on the run. Nice slow from Duke, and that's going to be a kill. OK, so risky move. But again, SK Telecom gets the Baron. Gets but it all comes kill. back to starting the Baron. Remember, this enemy team is triple AD carry fighting in the jungle where they can be so easily flanked by Faker. Nice uh, initiation, another nice Azir sec with the Emperor's Divide. And then once again, it's squishy AD carries yep. running in every direction. This team from Jin Air plays so well in front of an enemy structure in the open where they can all kite back but forced into the jungle. That's why SKT rushed the Baron, is they know yep. if they can turn and fight, they will win every fight, especially after winning the last few skirmishes and getting those extra items. It was a nice uh, desperation play from 
Trace and Kuzan to take down Bang during that team fight. But that was really all they could manage. Well, Man, Faker is so good. I was going <laughs> to say, we've seen a couple of Aziz in a row that from Kuro and then Kuzan that made us go, oh, what's all this Azir play? And then you see 7, 0, and 3. Yeah. Faker making the plays left, right, and sending. Like, all right, Azir. Faker's, man, he's my MVP. He's my MVP for this game. I mean, he's got the best stat line. He's, he's got the MVP sewn up. Well, the, the plays, other. too, man. I mean, he's had two great Emperor's Divides where he's uh, caught at least one of the carries. I'm just saying, if you have the plays and the stat line, you probably yeah. got the MVP. Oh, yeah. And we're seeing that very aggressive Azir style, too. You know, we're not seeing somebody wait until the last moment. We're seeing sort of the, the Coco style, right, where you go in right away, you make the play that starts the team fight, and uh, that's been working out well for them. He hasn't curved the Emperor's Divide as much as Coco did in a couple of those no. games, but no, he hasn't needed as, to. Not as good as Coco's Azir. Not, uh, not lately, but this game has been a great performance. SKT just steamrolling their way into the base right now. They use that base call. Pilot headbutted in there. Easy insta-gib on the AD carry from Jin Air. And SK Telecom looks like they're ready to wrap this one up after that double kill from Faker. They take out the inhibitor. They're like, oh, yeah, we need to kill that before we kill the Nexus. And they're actually going to back away right now. They're just going to finish this one out methodically, I guess. Waiting for the minion wave to push up to take another turret. Okay. They have that Baron buff. But they want to win hard. Tutorial victory for a team that struggled so much. There's a lot of value in that. This is some impressive dismantling from SKT. It really is. It really is. They might just dive again the moment they get a target. Yeah, we'll see. Pilots back up. We're only 25 minutes in the game, so the death timers aren't all that high. There's Che, Trace, Kuzan throwing down from the outside. Winged trying to flank a little bit. With Pilot coming in, SKT's on the run a little bit now. They are turning on to Wing. A little bit of damage. Trace goes in, or Duke goes in onto Trace, rather. There's a kill for Wing, though. Yeah, SKT, man. They have maybe overstayed a little bit. Duke goes down. Another kill for Kuzan, and now SK Telecom needs to run away. Interesting. Interesting series of events there. Those are the small, unforced errors from SKT that go yeah. against the cleanness of their display over two games. That's definitely what SKT, that's the sort of thing that Coma will stop smiling about. He's like, okay, good first 25 minutes, then what are you guys thinking here? What are you doing here? Where's the disconnect? Well, it looked kind of lackadaisical, and, and I you know, I felt they had a, a decent minion wave moving into those Nexus turrets, but they wanted to uh, play it out a little bit more methodically. Can't really argue with that, but then you, then you see situations like this, right, where your team's kind of expended a lot of mana, expended a lot of abilities, and then Pilot comes back, and you're like, yeah, we should never have pushed it this far. And the reason why you get angry as a coach, even if you win this 2-0 about situations like that, is that in another game where they don't have a 10,000 gold lead, where yeah. Faker doesn't have five items at 26 minutes, that's the sort of situation where you get punished. Other teams will put you to the sword if they're even, or in any hope of coming back into the game. But for this game, it's going to be a moot point, because SKT is going to need to do that a couple more times for Jin Air to have a chance. Yeah, but you're absolutely right, though. I mean, in another game, a decision like that could end up costing you that game. Hey, that happens at 45 minutes. Any game can end in patch 2016. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Either way, though, exposed inhibitor up in the top lane. Duke's pushing that one up. He's got his teleport to join his team if he needs to. I feel like two series in a row, Fake is rewriting the rule book on champions, because with these items, we saw Assassin Lulu. It's looking like Assassin Azir as well. Here's the teleport. Duke coming in. They take that bottom inhibitor turret. Wolf goes in for the Fates Call Engage, but Kuzan able to Valk away from that one. Wow, tries to go for that, but Pulverize takes a lot of damage during a turn. There's the ult, winged low. Can SKT win it right here? Let's see. Emperor's Divide pushes Trace away. SK Telecom looking a little bit hesitant about going all the way in. Nice. Wow, good catch onto Kuzan from Blank. Great cocoon. And eliminating one of the carries there. That is going to go a long way. Big minion wave coming in through the mid lane with the super minions. SKT, though, just rotating up to go after that top inhibitor. It'll be three inhibs, so they take this one down. Yep. That's right. All three will be down soon. They may want to try to ride this minion wave to a win, though, as Kuzan will be back in about 25 seconds. I think the game might be over by then, though. Here comes SKT going after that Nexus turret. Jin Air needs to make one sort of last-ditch effort. Faker goes in on the pilot in the back lines to try to zone him out of the fight. Knockups onto SKT. Faker trapped a little bit on the other side of the Nexus. Meanwhile, Baker actually does end up going down. There goes the Nexus turret, and SK Telecom needs to back off again. It's a, a 
pretty sloppy close. Faker wanted to be a hero, wanted to get back and keep the carries out of the fight, just ended up getting himself killed and, you know, with a little bit more coordination. I feel like that should have been the end of the game. It's unnecessary, but it's just slight blotches next to what has been mostly a flawless performance. It's, it's little things, but like we just talked about, those little things in a different game can cost you. Well, SKT are not 2015 SKT yet, but this is definitely a step in the right direction as Jinnah, I think, are just surprised by by what SKT have done. They've just I'm been, surprised. I mean, we all are. They've been passengers to the SKT train rolling once again. Yeah, it's it's true, man. And and uh, Blank had a great game one on Nidalee, got that MVP, and game two hasn't been quite as dominant, but he's hit a lot of good cocoons when it matters. And Faker, you know, despite getting a little bit over eager here and there, has had a just monstrous game on this Azir. So if it's not a hype train for SKT, what's a return to form type of train? Uh, well, I mean, if you're talking about train as like the pinnacle of technology in, Definitely. This, in this hype world, then I guess uh, maybe like a hype hype uh, horse carriage or something <laughs> like that, with state-of-the-art state horse carriage. A hype horseless carriage? Know. Well, no, because I would think a car is superior to a train because it can go places trains can't. That's a fair point. So we're talking about a time before cars here, where trains were kind of hidden. So, yeah, hype wagon. <laughs> the hype wagon. The SKT <laughs> hype wagon. <laughs> SKT hype wagon sounds like a great band name. Well, well the hype outside. wagon has to hit all stations if they're going to make it to playoffs. Yeah, it, it really does. And uh, this is a good way to start. A two over Jinair certainly will uh, help a lot. They took that dragon, number four. They uh, got the Baron again. Now, SKT, we'll see how ready they are to end this. Trace lurking on the side of the fight here. Does the lurking mean much when it's a 12,000 gold deficit and they have no inhibitors, though? Well, there's a thin line between lurking and hiding. Here he <laughs> comes, though. He was lurking. Whoa, on to bang right away, but where's the follow-up? Dusha Praj does a little bit. SKT breaking things up in the back, though. Winged Kuzan having to flee. Pilot locked up by yet another Kakuna. A double kill for Duke at the end. And Bang just chases Trace out of the fight as the Nexus falls. And that is it. SK Telecom with the 2-0. And a great game for Faker. Definitely, uh, maybe not a total return to form, but a big step in the right direction for this team. Yeah, certainly no flawless victory by Mortal Kombat terms. But the life oh, yeah. bar was still pretty full, Doa. It was still very close to a perfect series from SK Telecom. It's far enough ahead, man. They got the fatality. They did. They hit like Ford, 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 Starch <laughs> or something like that. Ford, 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 Block. And it was Faker. I, you had to feel it was going to be this year. That's why I said it during Champion Select. I'm like, Faker likes to dismantle skill matchups and then play that champion and show the other person what's up. And he showed Kuzan the potential of Azir. 10-1 and 4, died needlessly towards the end of the game. But so many items, very close to six items in a 30-minute game. Wow, and happy Coma again. This is like the happiest I've seen Coma in a long time, dude. Maybe, maybe they